Amen. I wanted to walk over to Norte and just stick the mic in his mouth while he's playing the drums. I don't know if he can play drums and sing at the same time. I saw him singing it. Y'all don't even y'all don't even know. Y'all don't even know. Give the Lord a great praise for our musicians and our choir. And thank y'all so much for a love offering today. I, I don't, uh, I don't, let me put it this way. I don't want to say I don't expect because that's just not the right terminology. I'm always expecting a blessing. I just don't know where it's coming from. <laughs> Somebody let that child in. <laughs> <laughs> He's going to kick me out the door. I'm going to get to where I'm going. Carry him back there. That's right. That's what you do, son. When the door's not open, you knock until it comes open. If they don't hear your knock, kick the door. <laughs> I love it. What I was going to say is, is I don't require that from you because my reward to do this for you is it comes from the Lord and I'm greatly rewarded every day to be the pastor of Life Church to be your pastor if you'll let me be I can't be your pastor unless you allow it but if you allow me to be your pastor I promise the Lord rewards me every day when I see growth when I see the Lord blessing you just like any father and the fathers that I have in the house that I honor, I honor you. You're so blessed and you're so grateful when you see God bless your children. And that's a reward enough. And then God, it's a Louisiana word, land yap, extra. God gives so much extra all the time, all the time. And so uh, I'm just very grateful today for you and for that. Uh, we were at a conference uh, a couple weeks ago, and one of the things I heard was the principle of honor, and we teach that in this house. Everybody say amen. amen. But the principle of honoring up, honoring down, and honoring all around. So what does that mean? That, mean, that means I honor the president. I honor the uh, my pastor. I have a pastor. Did y'all know that? I have a pastor. Because every pastor needs a pastor. Let every soul be subject to higher powers. Am I on the book today? Yes. Amen. Uh, honor up. Honor down. If you mistreat your waiter or your waitress and I see you do it, I will be pulling you to the side and having a very kind conversation with you. Because that's not what we do as people of God. We honor up, but we honor down. We honor the servants. We'll be talking about that a little bit today. And then we honor all around. Honor all men. Honor all men. You say, well, I don't like the president. Well, he probably doesn't like you either. <laughs> it's not about you liking him. It's about what you are. It's about who you are. Do you hear me, people of God, today? I'm, 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 I'm trying to teach you something because when this principle of honor is instilled in you, and I can see today that right there is about you honoring Amen. the pastor. It's, it's, it's not about me personally, even though I, I, I know for some of you it is, and I, and I appreciate that. But it is so right to do these things. And if you, if you implement these things in your life on a regular basis, honor up, Honor down, honor all around. You'll see God bless you everywhere you go. And when someone doesn't do right, you say, that's okay. The next one will. I was playing racquetball yesterday, and every time we missed a shot, my opponent would say, next. <laughs> Turn in your Bibles, if you will, to Luke chapter 17. Somebody came today for some soul food. And so that's what we're going to have today, some soul food. We're going to feed your soul. Feed your soul. If you go all week without eating, you're going to be starving by the time you get here. Amen. We had a great, delicious breakfast today. Sorry if you missed it. For you, it was good. We had, what's that stuff called, Tammy? Sweet Alabama. How'd you say it? 
pecan bread. <laughs> pecan bread. We, we're getting her. Sweet Alabama pecan bread. Oh, my goodness. It was good. I got the rest of it. The lanyap. Mm-hmm. So sorry if you missed it, but anyway, uh, you had some natural food, and hopefully all of you all ate this week. But if you went all week without eating spiritually, then you're going to be very hungry. Uh, you're in, and sometimes, you know, they say this when, in, in places where they have no food. At some point, you're not hungry anymore. You, you get past the hunger part, and you, then you're just starving, but you, you don't even know that you're missing it. And so this happens to us spiritually, too, is we, we get past the place where we even want it anymore. And he, Lord, help us to hunger and thirst after righteousness. Help us to hunger and thirst. I love Brother Terry Platt uh, on his Facebook page. He puts a one minute with God every day. You do it every day, don't you? Every day. If you're not his friend, friend him. It's such a blessing. Just one minute with God can change the course of your day. Now, Lord, I hope you got more than one minute, but if all you got is one minute, at least take a minute. <laughs> Some of y'all got up this morning, you put your britches on, you combed your hair, you brushed your teeth, and you didn't even say good morning, Lord, or good morning to your wife. You just kicked into gear without saying anything. You didn't say good morning to the Lord, or you didn't say, did you say good morning to your wife, Trey? I saw y'all look at each other. So I was talking to you. <laughs> oh, today we're talking, uh, we're power people. That's our month's theme. Everybody say power people. Are we people of the power? Are you powerful people? Are you people of the name? How many believe there's power in that name? How many believe there's power in the blood? How many believe that Jesus said that all power in heaven and in earth is given unto me? How many believe all power belongs to God? And then he said, behold, I give unto you power. Everybody say power. Did Jesus give it to you? If he gave it to you, do you have it? I'll take a better yeah. In fact, look at somebody and say, oh yeah. Say, I got it. The question is, are you using it? Yesterday, I was sitting in my man cave, and I was watching Blippi with my grandson. And the power went off. And it knocked the power out for about five minutes, and then it flickered, it flickered a few times, and it went off for about five minutes, and it finally came back on. Well, when the power came back on, I still had to turn the TV. I had to turn Blippi back on. See, the power was going to the TV, but I wasn't using it. Now, did Jesus give you the power? Look at somebody say, oh, yeah. yeah. Now, the question is, is are you using it? Are you plugged in? Is your light turned on? Is your radio on? Are you tuned in and tuned up? Are you hummed in to what God is doing? Or is your ear hastened to the throne? Are you plugged in today? Look at your neighbor and say, you got to plug in. I remember that commercial. Plug it in, plug it in. I think it was a air freshener commercial sometimes you got to freshen the air plug it in plug it in <laughs> next time your wife acts up you got to say plug it in plug it in just make sure she heard the sermon she may not appreciate that today we're going to talk about increasing faith increasing power increasing faith increasing power now we we serve in a universal we, we, we serve God in a everybody say universe that's the all that's the all that represents God and God God set into place universal laws everybody say universal laws and these are not bad words these are scriptural uh, foundational understandings when in the scripture says they that love thy law they that love thy law, it's not talking about the law of Moses. When you understand the law that God has placed in the earth, universal law is like the law of sowing and reaping. When you love that, great peace have they who love thy law and nothing is going to knock them off their block. Nothing is going to offend them. Nothing is going to get their goat. Because they understand principles. So today I'm talking about principles. Everybody say it's about the principle. 
Your faith should be increasing. Your power should be increasing. Not lessening. It's like the power you get from Swepco. You don't have less power coming to your house because you plugged in all your TVs at the same time. And some of y'all did that. It's still flowing, right? Right? Right. Well, Lord, if Swepco doesn't run out of power, my God, do you think God runs out of power because you use the power? Do you think God runs out of money because you spent your money? You think God runs out of healing because he healed you? Because you're getting better that some, somehow God's power is diminished. I'm telling you, God's power is not diminished. He just expects you to increase in it with your faith. Verse 1 of chapter 17. If you'll read it with me, you don't have to stand. But we're going to begin reading at verse 1. And if you have it, turn say amen. If you don't have it, it'll be up on the wall. <clears throat> then Jesus said unto his disciples, It is impossible that offenses... It is impossible, but that offenses will come. But woe unto him through whom they come. It were better for him that a millstone were hung around his neck and he were thrown into the sea than that he should offend one of these little ones. Look at somebody and say, I'm one of these little ones. Take heed to yourselves. If your brother sins against you, rebuke him. And if he repents, forgive him. And if he sins against you seven times in a day, and seven times in a day returns to you saying, I repent, you shall forgive him. And the apostle said to the Lord, increase our faith. Come on, say that with me. Say, increase, stay with me now, increase our faith. So the Lord said, if you have faith as a mustard seed, you can say to this mulberry tree, be pulled up by the roots and be planted into the sea, and it would obey you. And which of you, having a servant plowing or tending sheep, will say to him when he's come in from the field, come at once and sit down to eat? But he, will he not rather say to him, Prepare something for my supper. That's what some of you men say when you come in from your hard day. Woman, cook me some grub. <laughs> Prepare something for my supper and gird yourself and serve me till I have eaten and drunk and afterward you will eat and drink. Does he thank that servant because he did the things that were commanded him? Jesus said, I think not. I think not. So likewise, you, when you have done all those things which you are commanded, say we are unprofitable servants. We have done what is our duty to do. Father, let my tongue and lips speak. The ready writer, God, let the oracles of God come forth today. Let our hearts, our conscience, our minds, our wills, Come open to your will and to your way. Let us yield to the Spirit of the Lord and say yes to all of your promises that are yes and in you. Amen. And I pray, God, that a healing wave would roll over this congregation. A healing wave, healing from the past, healing from memories of the past, healing from sickness and disease. We have all power over all manner of sickness. And as a healing wave comes over this congregation, their minds are renewed to increasing faith and increasing power. It not only flows through us, Lord, but we use the power. We use the power that flows in us, through us, as us. Give us the strength of mind and character to keep these things in mind 24-7 all the days of our life. And Lord, we say to you that we will bless your name all of our days. All my, say it, all my days. Yes, I will. All my days. Yes, I will. Give him one more praise today as you say amen. Look at somebody say, increase in faith. Increasing power. 
Increasing faith, increasing power. Today's meditative thought, which is your spiritual homework. Thank you. Spiritual. This is a schoolhouse. You've come to learn. Did you come to learn? Did you really come ready to, to receive something maybe that, maybe that you didn't know? I'm going to tell you that some of you, especially those that have been in the kingdom a long time, I may just be saying things that you've heard all your life, but it may be repackaged in a way and said in a way that you've never heard it that uh, knocks you upside the head and you'll say, well, I should have had a V8. Knocks you upside the head because sometimes you feel like a nut and sometimes you don't. Amen. Wouldn't you like to be a Dr. Pepper too? Be a pepper. Drink Dr. Pepper. I'm giving you a chance to write this down because this is your spiritual homework or take a picture of it. Today's meditative thought says, I serve the God of increase. As I grow in my relationship with the Lord, my life is getting better and better. I'm healthier, holier, and happier Every day. <laughs> I know by the Spirit of the Lord and by common sense that this statement is not always how you feel it to be. And it's not always how it shows up. Because most of us, at least in parts of our life, have had a roller coaster relationship with God. It goes up, it goes down. It goes up, it goes down. Sometimes it goes upside down. Sometimes it goes all the way around. But God's trajectory for you is always up. He spoke to John the Revelator, come up a little higher. And that's what God is saying to the church of the living God here in this house. That's what God is saying to Life Church. That's what God is saying to the Jesus name people that are sitting on the seats of this sanctuary. Look at your neighbor and say, God is trying to tell you something today. God's direction for you is up. He is calling you higher. He is calling you up. He didn't call you to peck with the chickens, baby. He called you to soar with the eagles. And the only reason you're pecking with the chickens is because you want to. Or somebody told you you had to. And you believed it. I'm flapping today. I serve the God of increase. He is increasing me, not decreasing me. When John the Baptist said, I must decrease so that he can increase. As I de decrease in my selfish and I decrease in my worldliness and I decrease in the lies of the enemy and the deceptions that are there, then he on the inside of me, not on the outside, he on the inside of me is increasing. Did you know, Sister Donna, that God ain't broke? Did you know, Brother Frankie, that God ain't sick. Did you know that you can help no poor people by being poor yourself? Did you know that being sick does not help anybody else get their healing? Did you know that you being blessed does not take the blessing away from anybody else? You can use all of the resources of God and you ain't even scratched the surface. I don't care if you roll up in here in a Lamborghini. They're making them. Somebody's got to drive them. Those folks that have that job making them, somebody's got to pay the salary. But we get this mindset of I don't deserve it or I can't have it. And I've got to stay in my little spot, my, my little spot here on the corner of, of, of Pitiful Street, on the Pitiful pitiful avenue and, and barely making it. God, I'll reach up to scratch the bottom and, and uh, you know, took a whole lot of trying just to get up that hill. I, I'm striving and I'm straining and, and I've got a testimony because I was poor and, and I've got a little bit now and I'm better than I was, but, but I don't think I can get any better than this. And as long as you believe that, that's the truth for you. But how many are going to greater heights? How many are going to greater depths? How many believe there's always more? There's always more.
There's always more. I thought about this, Brother Trey. You know, we, we don't like need. We don't like being needy. We don't like having needs. Am I, am I the only one? I'm about to have my house paid off. My, I'm about to get debt free. I love it. But there's one thing dangerous about not needing a whole lot. Is that when you don't need a whole lot, you won't get a whole lot. Need precedes more. Need precedes increase. This is a mystery. Need. Need. Everybody say need. When you need something, you'll get what you need. And how many have been praying, Lord, give me more? And it seems like more needs show up in your life. You don't, you don't understand it. The need is taking away the... No, you don't, it's the other way around. The need is producing the increase in your life. God will always supply all of your needs according to his riches and glory. And the problem is that some of you all haven't got needy enough. Some of you all haven't said, Lord, I need you. I need you. Every hour, I need you. I need your power. I need your anointing. I need your strength. I need to increase. Lord, let me... Me decrease so that you can increase in me. I need it. I need it just like oxygen. I need it just like food and water. I need it just like shelter. I need his touch, his presence, his power to increase in my life. And that need produces the increase. We had a need for air conditioner be repaired. I present the need and the offering went up to take care of that need. Because that's how it works. Look at your neighbor and say, don't be afraid of need. Don't be afraid of needing something. Don't, I'm talking to somebody here today because you have a need. Don't be afraid of your need. It precedes your increase. Look at somebody and say, we're going to say it. Say, I serve. I, serve. I didn't hear enough attitude in East Texas. I want you to pull your neck up out of your shirt. I want you to pull your eyes over your glasses if you wear them. I want you to get a little sassy for somebody in Bangladesh on the World Wide Web on Facebook Live. I serve, I serve. the God of increase as I grow in my relationship with the Lord. My life is getting better and better. Better and better. You don't have to see it. Look at somebody and say, better and better. I'm healthier. Somebody didn't believe it today. I'm healthier. I'm holier. <laughs> and I'm happier. Every day. Give the Lord a good praise. One little thing I want to say about that. Make sure when you're getting holier that you don't get holier than thou. <laughs> While you're doing it, okay? Get holier but not holier than thou. Amen. I want you to pull up that law of increase. Universal law of increase. Now we talk about universal laws here because it is the law that if you love it, you'll have great peace. These laws we implement into the, into the service because the scriptures, the scriptures declare them and bear them out. Say amen. amen. And so a law that is spiritual in nature, that is universal in nature, is a law that cannot be broken. We say laws are meant to be broken, right? If the, if the speed limit says 55, how fast are you driving? I heard at 80. Help us all, God. Whoever said it, just take note of what car they drive and just get out of the way. <laughs> yes, a law was meant to be broken. In fact, you'll find this. How many dads and moms today that I have that got teenage or on the verge of teenage? You, you get, I'm going to tell you. The quickest way to get them to do something you don't want them to do is demand that they not do it. I forbid they go in the room and go, oh, what you don't know won't hurt you. 
So we have something in us that doesn't want to be told what to do. And there's an innate rebellion in us that says, if there is some kind of limitation or limit placed on me, I am going to break that limit. I am going to break that boundary. I'm going to go past what relegates me to a certain spot. You tell me to drive 55. Well, my speedometer says I can go 120. So why, if my speedometer tells me I can go 120, am I only going to go 55? If my car will go that fast, why don't I take it that fast? Because that is the soul of everyone on the planet. Do you hear me today? And so these laws try to impend. And look, I'm not saying be a law breaker. You obey the laws of man for the kingdom of God's sake, for God's sake. Amen? Amen. All right. So those of you that drive 80 and a 55 will have an altar call later and let you get your old business straight with the Lord. I'm just telling you the difference between a natural law and a spiritual law because a spiritual law cannot be broken. You can't break a spiritual law. It's not a relegation or a limitation on you. It actually takes the limitations off of you. Universal laws don't restrict you. They set you free. Do you see the difference? So the law of increase means whatever is given attention expands. Whatever you give attention to expands. Everybody say expands. Now, you all ladies know that to give birth to something, there's expansion and contraction. Contractions hurt. In a church congregation, sometimes there's contraction and expansion. I think we see a little expansion here today. On a summer day, you are a great crowd. Say amen. Amen. But we're going to expand anymore. But sometimes there's contractions that go along with that so that you can give birth to the greater, to the bigger. Now, look, I'm teaching today, and I know there may not be a whole lot of amen in the room, but as long as you're getting this and as long as you stay with me, I'm okay. And if the ACs aren't quite running, if you'll uh, make sure that they're all set down, Brother Scott, I'm looking at you. Drop that thing. Drop it. Drop it like it's hot because it's hot. I'm hot. Are y'all hot? Amen. Maybe I just need to set it on 80 one day and everybody be like, oh, yeah, we paid our pledge. <laughs> So this law of increase sets us free, and it means whatever is given attention to expands. There's expansion and contraction, but it, that means in the positive and the negative. If I give attention to something that's causing me stress, then stress is going to expand and increase in my life. Where focus goes, energy flows. Amen. Where focus goes, energy flows. Everything. Everybody say everything. In fact, get slang with it and look at somebody and say everything. Exist in seed form first. And it multiplies in right conditions. So everything exists in seed form first. That means that your thoughts, everybody say your thoughts are seeds. Did you know that? The little thought that something's wrong, something's wrong. It's just a little thought. But I give attention to that thought. And something that was never wrong wasn't going to be wrong becomes wrong because you gave attention to it and it increased and expanded. And you, th- you felt like somebody had something against you and they didn't have anything against you. They weren't even thinking about you. But you started thinking about it, and all of a sudden, you create this scenario where, they, yeah, they do have something to get you, but they didn't have it before you thought they did. You thought, and it happened. That chair that you're sitting on did not come into this place before somebody thought about the design and the materials of that chair. Do you hear me today? God exists. Even God. Everybody say, God exist as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Father means he's Father in thought. That means he's Father in creation. When he thought about it and then he spoke it, that's when it became. And you're created in the same name and nature of God. That when you think something, that those thoughts are energy that can take form. Thoughts become words and words become action. And thoughts, words, and actions formulate and form the trajectory of the life that you're on. If you don't like the life that you're living, 
guess who is to blame? Nobody but you. And somebody's going to try to make you feel good. And they're going to say it was all your daddy's fault. And it's all so-and-so's fault. But it ain't nobody's fault but your own. And I'm looking at you right through my glasses, right into your eyes. The life that you're living has been created by you because everything exists in seed form first and multiplies in the right conditions. How many farmers do I have in the room? You grow at least homegrown tomatoes. That hot sauce today was very angry hot sauce. I don't know if I had a little bit. It was pretty hot. And my wife's niece, Netha, made the hot sauce today. And I, I thought as I was eating it, whoo, Netha was kind of mad today when she made this because it's, it's pretty angry. But the truth is, is the seeds and those peppers that Brother Patrick Pinkson, I'm pointing a finger right back there, grew them in his garden and in the right soil with the right water. The garden produced what the seed indicated that it was. But how many have ever not tended your garden and weeds came over your plants and choked out the life? You can look at the parable of the sower. And talk, I'm talking about the right conditions. The right conditions. Even when you have a negative thought, that's a seed. But you don't give it the right conditions to take germination. You don't water that seed. See, it's not a sin to have a thought. You just have to cast down every thought and imagination that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. Am I talking to anybody? The Bible says, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. You have the mind of Christ if you allow the mind of Christ to rule and reign in you. Woo! Knock, knock. Jesus. Jesus who? You don't know Jesus? No last name necessary. Everything exists in seed form first and multiplies in the right condition. Write that down, if you will. Law of increase means whatever is given attention to expands. I got three things for you today. Three-pointer, three-point turn here today. Some of you all need to turn or burn. It's hot. So you burn or condemn or condemned or live a life in condemnation because you don't repent or turn. Everybody say turn, turn, turn to everything. Turn, turn, turn. There is a season. Turn, turn, turn. That was your worldly song of the day. Amen. Three things. And this these three things are actually the the steps to take to increase in faith and power. And how many would pray like the disciples, as we said, and talk to the Lord and say, Lord, increase my faith. Increase my faith. How many would say that today? Increase my faith. When you increase your faith, your power is going to be increased. See, there's not a shortage of God's power. There's not a shortage of God's love. There's a shortage of our belief in it. Amen. There's not a shortage of kindness and love and grace toward everyone in the world. There's a, just a shortage of belief in it. And whatever you give an attention to, whatever is, it expands. Can I use this as an example? Because we have a little bit of everybody here today. How many glad that you go to church where whether you're white, black, brown, or purple, you can come to this church and worship God and throw down and praise God just like you caught the lotto. I'm glad about it today. Look at somebody and say in the words of Virginia Slim, we've come a long ways, baby. So you talk about, well, there's racism and people think they're prejudiced here and you create this thought that they are. And guess what? Because you thought that, you come across every single racist that exists and there's not that many of them. But you come in contact with every single one of them because you think that that's how it is. And there's no shortage of love and grace one for another. We see it right here in this church. We don't even think about that. We're just brothers and sisters in the Lord. We're just family. My God, we should talk about my family. Have I got a good amen in this house? 
So I'm not giving attention to that. And I'm surprised when people do. And then they give attention to it. And then the next thing you know, you got the Black Lives Matter. Uh, and then the people in the white sheets. And they're coming together. And, they, and they've created all that because they gave attention to it. Mm. Y'all like me today? This is true in the positive And it's true in the negative Whatever you give attention to is going to expand So these three things are going to be true In these things But I want you to increase in your faith And in your power And I believe if you'll pray like the disciples Increase us, increase us, increase us That the God of the increase Will answer your prayer And the first principle in increase Is forgive Everybody say forgive he said, if a man comes to you and does you wrong and comes back to you that day and repents, then you shall forgive him. And then if he does it seven times, the same thing, like I, I feel like just like punching Sheldon in the arm. Oh, oh I'm sorry. You forgive me? Yeah. Mm, 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 mm. I'm sorry, you forgive me? <laughs> Whatever you give attention to. <laughs> Do you think that the person that punched him uh, seven times and came back seven times, you think they were sorry on that seventh time? Do you think it was about them ever saying they're sorry? Do you think it was ever about them? I know it says, but in another place it does. In the other place when this is mentioned, the 70 times 7, it doesn't even say they have to say they're sorry. Do you realize when Jesus prayed, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do, they didn't ask for forgiveness. So when I say, and you're helping me in the back, number one, forgive. Say forgive. forgive. When I say forgive, that means that you are letting go. When I'm talking about increase and the law of increase, it has to do with letting go. Letting go. As long as you're trying to be in control of it, as long as you're trying to hold the reins, then all you're doing is holding the reins. All you're doing is holding God back. All you're doing is keeping it coming from you. And so when he said somebody comes to you and they do you wrong, forgive them. Forgive them. He set this down as a principle of increase. Increase begins with forgiveness, with letting go. Oh, my God. Do you hear me today? That your increase in your finances has to do with letting go of what you have first. Your increase in your love life has to do with you letting go of everybody that did you wrong. I know they did you wrong. Get up and move on. Move on. I know that sounded so country. <laughs> Move on. <laughs> so forgive them. Forgive them. Let them go. Free them up. Because when you free them up, you free yourself up to increase. To increase. To increase. He said, right after he said that, Lord, for, increase our faith. Because it's going to take a lot of faith if I punch you out seven times and keep coming back and say, I'm sorry, and you know I'm not sorry. You know good and well I'm not sorry for you to forgive me. I'm looking at all y'all because I know that this principle hits everybody in some kind of way. Because some of the people that have done you wrong, it's just you. You've done yourself wrong. And if you're going to give forgiveness to somebody else who doesn't deserve it, why don't you try giving forgiveness to yourself? Why don't you try, why don't you try believing that you're worthy of forgiveness? Because as long as you hold that thing against yourself and you say, I can't be blessed in this area of my life because I have this situation in my life. And it's not that situation causing you not to be blessed. It's your belief that that situation is causing you not to be blessed. That causes you not to be blessed. Is somebody hearing what I'm saying today? It's whatever you give intention to is expanding in your life. And it's like the Bible says, whatever you bind... And if you're binding someone to their sin against you or you're binding your own sin to yourself, the Bible says heaven will bind also. God is mirroring back whatever you're giving to it. They that love thy 
law. Great peace have they, and nothing. Don't come up and punch me in the arm today and test me. Because I told you last week, if I was on national TV and somebody slapped my face, it would take the Holy Ghost. Just not to react. <laughs> Look at somebody say, don't push me because I'm close to the edge. Some of the young people got it. None of the older got it. Say, don't tempt me now. Don't tempt me. Just because I have to forgive and the meek inherit the earth doesn't mean the weak inherit the earth. <laughs> I had a situation on Friday. I'm going to be honest with you. Because my, I got a pet peeve and everybody's got them, so don't look at me and judge. My pet peeve is cold food. Don't give me cold food when I'm paying money for it. Don't give me cold fries. I want fresh fries. Do y'all hear me? <laughs> and so I went to an establishment to get some hot wings and some fries. And the lady who was very surly behind the, uh, the counter, but I didn't want to give attention to it for it to expand, so I just hardly even noticed it because that's what the Bible says love does. Love hardly notices when someone's not doing it right. It notices a little bit, but I didn't give a lot of attention to it. But I saw her attitude. Look at your neighbor and say, I see it when they got one. She had a little attitude, but I, I was okay. Made my order. They were taking a long time to do everything as they usually do, but I was okay with it because I was getting a tired place and I was just taking my time. Look at your neighbor and say, the problem is, is you don't take your time. You got to take time. And so I was taking my time waiting. And so this young man calls out Aiden. Aiden. And so I thought he said Andy. So I went up and he said, Aiden. I said, well, I'm Andy. And so he goes to the kitchen and says, yours ain't ready yet. And so I go back and sit down. I could tell it looked like my order, but I was like, okay, I, I'll wait. I'm, I knew there was a couple before me. They hadn't got their food yet. So I thought, okay, mine probably is still cooking. So I, I'm watching, and they just set the table, set that food on the counter. Just on the counter. I'm not talking about under the hot plate. I'm not talking about under a lamp. I'm talking about on the counter while all the flies were landing on it. And every second that goes by, that food's getting colder. Look, I'm going somewhere, so stay with me just a little bit. I'm not going down a rabbit trail. This is going to help somebody. Look at some, somebody say, you got to help somebody. <laughs> so... After about five minutes, the girl who had an attitude went over, looked at the name, and said, Aiden. And then nobody answered. Then she comes and brings that food over to me. I had seen it sitting there for five minutes. I saw flies landing. I saw a fly land on it. And I said, no, ma'am. No, ma'am. <laughs> So you could take that cold food and take it right back. She said, I'll remake it. So I waited another 15 minutes and got some hot food that did not treat my stomach right. Probably, I don't know. You know, don't, you don't mess with people that mess with the food. But anyway, the young man that messed up was evidently a new employee, just a young teenage guy. He came out and he said... I'm sorry I messed up your order. I said, that's okay. I said, that's okay. We all make mistakes. It's no problem. I got my hot food. So do you see how you can stand in the place and get what you need and get what you want and be firm in your thing, but be kind and be forgiven? Because evidently that young lady, was. she told me, she said, I just got you. I, I, I just wrote your name down wrong. Well, it's because you weren't paying attention because you had a bad attitude. That's why. But you know what? I'm not going to throw your sin up to you because if, you throw your, if I throw your sin up to you, somebody's going to throw my sin up to me. Look at somebody do this. <laughs> because this, the principle is I meet nobody but myself. I see myself everywhere I go. Everyone I look at is just a mirror looking at me. The truth is, is it's hot and people, it gets hot in East Texas, people get attitude. 
If you want to increase, if you want to increase, you got to have something about yourself that says, I release and I let go. I'm not holding this. I'm going to get my hot food. I'm going to have it. I'm going to say no, ma'am. I'm going to say no, sir. I'm going to be kind as I can be and still receive that which I paid for, that which I believe for, that which I expect. But I hold no man. I hold no woman. I hold not myself. I don't hold sin to myself or to anyone else. Because I want to increase. And even if they're not sorry, and that young man was so repentant, and that young lady was so not. I forgave the whole establishment. That's why I'm not telling you where it was. But its initials are Wingstop. <laughs> Number two, the second principle in increasing in faith and increasing in power is to simply serve. Serve. Right after Jesus says, if you have faith as a mustard seed and you speak to the mulberry tree, which speaks of growth. How many, know what a, how many have ever had a mulberry? We have them in Virginia. They're, they're the, one of the messiest fruit trees because they cast down fruit and it's just like... Purple, all underneath. <laughs> I, I don't know who said that, but we'll just forgive you <laughs> and release you and let you go. <laughs> it makes good water, you mean. <laughs> well, Jesus turned the water to wine. Uh, but these mulberry trees are, are, are messy and they're, they're big. They're big trees. They're heavy trees. He said, if you have a faith as a mustard seed, which is one of the smallest seeds, but grows into one of the greatest trees. And if you think about a tree, as to below, so to the above. A tree can only expand out into the atmosphere and, into, and be a home for the birds and, and feed us when it has deep roots that go down and and get its source of nutrients and water from the ground from which it came. So if you were to see as an x-ray a tree, it would look underneath like it does on top. You realize that some people don't look like very much because they don't go down very deep. And these pine trees that don't have a lot of depth in the roots, when the ice storm and the wind storm comes along, they knock, knock those things down. They're top heavy. Say amen if it's okay if you hear what I'm saying. So he said, you can speak to this deep tree that's really entrenched, really down in the ground because it's a big tree up here. It's a big tree down here. To be uprooted, to be pulled up out of that ground and to be placed into the sea and it, everybody say, and it, the tree will obey you. That sounds like a lot of faith and it sounds like a lot of power. To remove a tree that the tree... I'm not talking about your crew obeying you to take the tree out. I'm talking about the tree itself uprooting itself and replanting itself somewhere else. That's the outlandish metaphor that God gives for increasing faith and increasing power. At the request, increase our faith. This is what he says to them. And then right after he says that, it's all together. If I say it's all together... He says, which of you, having a servant, having worked in the fields all day, says to the servant, come in and let me fry you an egg. You sit down. You've been working all day, and I, we're going to change roles, and I'm going to be the cook, and you're going you're gonna to be the, uh, the master. Which, which one of you does that? Or rather would he say, after you've worked in the fields, you're tired, you're hot, you got an attitude because you've been working at Wingstop all day and somebody got on your nerves and you're taking it out on all the customers, but you get home and your boss says, make me dinner. And while you're at it, go change your clothes. You smell bad. Raise your hand if you're sure. It's hot out there. Everybody take precautions. Say amen. Go change your clothes, do a little squirt, squirt, get some of that. What did you say you got? Valentino. Put some Valentino on you, 
or cool water. Where's Dustin? Raise your hand, Dustin, and raise your hand, Sheldon. I got their hands up because I want you all to make sure you give them a hug before you leave today because they smell so good. And they reminded me, I didn't put my clone on today. But go change your clothes, make me dinner, and after I've eaten and after I've drank, then you can sit down and you can have your food. And does he thank him? I think not. Because it says that the service that they provide, the thought that the service that they provide is in direct response to their faith being increased. Now, I've already said that need precedes increase. Need precedes increase. And when you get into the attitude of service, everybody say service, you're going to need some things. Look at your neighbor and say, I need some things to serve. You ladies that serve breakfast today in this house, you did not serve with your fingers. Put a hand up and say, yes, I hope that's true. You had utensils. You had pancake turners, spatulas, spoons. Amen. You didn't serve without things that you needed. You had tables, you had plates, you had bowls. You all cooked, but you had ovens that helped, that turned on with the power. Look at your neighbor and say, turn your oven on with the power. You want it to be hotter, all you got to do is turn it up. Look at your neighbor and say, turn it up. Turn it up. Turn down for what? <laughs> turn it up. You need things to serve, right? You've been, you, you're out in the field. You're doing your work in the field. And how many are on the battlefield for the Lord today? Will you say yes? How many know that you have a ministry in the marketplace? Somebody say yes. Somebody say yes. I hope. Look, I'm, I'm not just preaching to you to be saved. I'm preaching and training and equipping you to go out of this place and be the Jesus that, that nobody will see unless you show up. The be the Jesus that no one will see unless you're there. The be the only Jesus some will ever see. The only Bible some will ever read and the only church some will ever go to. How many are in and on the battlefield for the Lord? say yes how many know that you're in marketplace ministry say yes how many know that when you go to Walmart or Wingstop you should be kind and let the fruit of the spirit and the grace of God flow through you I'm preaching quick now because I'm getting to where I'm going somebody say I know that's right you got to know that this is right today, but you're going to need tools to serve. If you're in the field, you need a hoe. You need a backhoe. You need something that's going to plant your crops. If you're in the kitchen, you need a pan. You need a stove. You need a spatula. You need a spoon. And the need for what you have helps you serve in a way that increases you increases you. How do you increase in your faith? It's you just begin serving. When you begin serving, you're going to need some things to serve. Jasmine, you're going to need some things to serve. Do you all understand? And whatever you're doing, you need some things to do it. How many work a job where you need tools to do it? You should understand what I'm talking about this today. And the more you serve, the more you need. And the more you need, the more you'll increase. Everybody say, it's all right to be needy today. Number three, the third way that you increase in faith and power is to remain humble. Everybody say, remain humble. Now, I said remain humble because the idea is, is that you should start humble. <laughs> You know, I, I understand sometimes that, you know, it's like that song said, Oh, Lord, it's hard to be humble when you're perfect in every way. And I, I preach about affirmation and self-esteem. and I want you to feel good about yourself. Look at your name and say, it doesn't do any good to feel bad about yourself. You might as well feel good. When you feel good about yourself, you'll do better. Right? You have some, so I believe in that. 
but not getting lifted up in that because in your flesh dwells no good thing. But Jesus lives in you as the Holy Spirit. I told my grandson last night where Jesus lives. He lives in your heart. His mama came around. I said, tell her where Jesus lives. And he goes, heart. <laughs> yes. So it's not confidence in me. It's I'm confident of this very thing that he who began a good work in me will complete it. I'm confident of the God in me. I'm not self-confident. I'm God-confident. Look at your neighbor. I'm not self-conscious. I'm God-conscious. It's not that I can do all things through my own strength. I can do all things through him who strengthens me. How many believe it today? And so my humility comes because I know it's not me, and I know that he is the giver of every good and perfect gift. Amen. So I start from the humble place. I humble myself under the mighty hand of God, but here's what happens. When you humble yourself under the mighty hand of God, what does it say that will happen in due season? God will exalt you. Look at you and say, God will exalt you. And do you know what happens sometimes in the kingdom of God is that when God exalts us, we become exalted in our own self. And if it's not natural pride, it will become spiritual pride. I, I've seen this all my life. Pride, I look, we're Pentecostal. We believe in, we believe in the Holy Ghost, but... But not to the point where we say we're better than the Baptist. Right. Say amen if it's all right. Amen. That's not a right attitude. Everything you got is because God gave it to you. Right. You ought to walk in an attitude of modicum. So it says, does this, this, this master thank the servant? I think not. Because the servant should say, I'm still an unprofitable servant because I've only done the least that I could do. I'm talking about increasing in faith and power. You only increase when you stay low. When you become exalted and lifted up in yourself, then the tables turn. And God said, God will exalt the humble, but will humble the proud. He will humble the exalted. And do you see how sometimes we can vacillate between here and there yeah. in the space in between? And how sometimes, how many remember that game? I think it was called Pong. Pong, on, uh, it was the first video game you could play on your TV. If I'm dating myself, you don't know what I'm talking about. I, then you just come along, you, you young Generation Zs. We will teach y'all something. How many remember Pong? Pong had two things, <laughs> and you turn a knob, and the thing went up. It was kind of like hockey. You're trying to get it in the, in the space, in the goalpost. But that little blip was going boop, 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 boop. And this is how all of us are in our relationship sometimes with God. Instead of growing in a relationship, we grow, we expand, and then we contract. We go this way, then we go that way. We start off going, we take two steps forward, one step back. We play the hokey pokey with God. We put our whole self in and take our whole self out. I want to get off the pong. That was a horrible video game. I mean, it's so much better now that if you, all had, if you had to play that game... You, you would laugh at our age group that we thought that was cool. Because th we thought it was cool, didn't we? Such good graphics. <laughs> We've, we're humble and God begins to exalt and he begins to bless and we begin to lift, get lifted up in the blessing and then God has to humble and come back down. And then we remember from whence we came and we humble ourselves and the principle of God bringing us back up and, and then it happens again and we get lifted up in the blessing and God brings us back down. What if we just remain humble? What if we just said, I'm going to forgive, I'm going to release, I'm going to be free to all. And I'm going to serve because it is just my job 
to do it. I'm going to do what God's called me to do. I'm going to do it faithful. I'm going to do it faithful. I'm going to do it faithful. I will tell you, I'll be here preaching next week. If two people come, I'm going to preach just like I'm preaching today. If 200, if 2,000 people come, I'm going to be preaching just like I preach today because it's not about you. It's about me doing what God has called me to do. And if I do what God has called me to do, that's the only thing I'm responsible for. Do you hear me today? I'm trying to set somebody free, and I'm trying to increase you in your faith and power. I don't want you to stay just where you're at, even though I believe where you're at is fabulous even though I think that you've done a great job even though I think that you've come a long ways baby even though I think that God is awesome in your life and look how far you've come and I can say you've come too far to go back but you still got a ways to go so you gotta keep on going he that puts his hand to the plow and looks back and says it's not fit for the kingdom of God so you're praying keep on praying if you're singing keep on on singing. If you're serving, keep on serving. If you're preaching, keep on preaching. Do what you do no matter what anybody else does because it's the least that you can do and your reward is increased because God is not mocked. These universal laws come into to, to play. They come into, they are going to work. Look at your neighbor say it's going to work. The law of increase says it has to work. Whatever I give attention to, what does it do? Expands. I'll take a little help. If you give attention to your relationship with the Lord, what's it going to do? If you give attention to your relationship with the world, what's it going to do? Expand. You know, I've, I've, I've been thinking about this. I'm going to teach a little bit on it probably in the coming weeks, maybe Next month. It says, fear not those that could kill the body, but fear that which can kill the soul. And think about things that kill your soul, things that you look at that absolutely kill your mind, kill your soul. Am I talking to anybody here today? And, and land you in hell or a hellish place. What you're giving attention to expands. Which, look, I'm not anti-entertainment. I go to the movies sometimes. I like to watch a show every once in a while. Even I like to listen to uh, uh, alternative news sources that have outlandish stories. Sometimes they talk about aliens. And I just listen like, these folks sound cray-cray. <laughs> but I'll tell you, don't have your TV on Fox News or CNN all day. And I'm equal opportunity. You got to have something about yourself that doesn't believe the Democrats or the Republicans. You believe God and the Spirit of God on the inside of you. Somebody doesn't like this day, but this is the truth. Don't get lied to, children. Don't be lied to. Let the spirit of truth, let what you give intention to expand in your life. What if you say, I'm only going to give attention to that which is possible, that which feeds my soul. I'm not going to give attention to that which kills my soul. You know, I'm not against, I, I like music. I like all kinds of music. But please, people of God, don't have your radio on death metal. All day long, all week. You're going to come in and hear this gospel music and you're going to want to go. <laughs> I'll take it. That's how you praise. But <laughs> Watch the words that go in. Watch the words that are spoken over you. I don't care what it, if it's country music and they're talking about people leaving you all day and the dog died and the long train was coming. Turn that mess off. You know, even commercials. We got to get better about this. Just muting those commercials. By the time they're done, you think you got alopecia. It doesn't even run in your family. You want to go get the medicine, and the medicine's going to cause diarrhea. I mean, it's going to cause chronic diarrhea. My God, give me the alopecia. I don't even know what it is. But I don't want the side effect from the medicine. 
And some of you have done talked yourself what kind of headache to have. Because you don't have an ordinary headache. Marlon, you got an Excedrin headache. And you caught that Excedrin headache listening to the commercial that told you that's what kind it is. Commercials, shows, words, things, things, even you, you got to know when not to pick up that phone, let it go to voicemail. And then I don't know if you all have this thing on your phone that, that puts the text of the voicemail. If you look at it, you can see what they're saying. And in East Texas, they miss half the words because they don't, we don't pronounce things right. You know what I'm talking about? You'll see just straight lines on some of the words, but you can kind of get the gist of what they're talking about. They're talking mess to the left, to the left. Swipe left. Archive. Delete. Trash. <laughs> I remember a comedian saying, you need to take your personal cursor, highlight, and press delete on some things in your life. Amen. How many want to increase in your faith? Increasing your power. I've delivered my soul today. I want to open up this time today because I'm going to tell you that if you make a choice to, rem to, to move in this direction, that the Spirit of the Lord is going to cause things to, to move in a certain way. If you don't make the choice to move in this direction, that you'll see it in the opposite. But it'll be true. Whatever you're giving attention to is increasing in your life all the time, every time, every day, in every way. Stand to your feet. And say, yes, I will lift you high in the lowest valley. Yes, I will bless your name. Yes, I will sing for joy when my heart is heavy all my days. Yes, I will see all my days all. Yes, I will. Okay, this altar's open. If you if you have a need at all, I want you to come first and come quickly in Jesus' name. I'm going to pray the prayer of agreement. We've got ministers here. They're going to pray the prayer of agreement. If you're a minister in this house, if you minister in this house at all, I want you to come down first. If you minister in this house, please, all my ministers, come. Now, if you have a need, I want you to come down in the name of Jesus. And we are going to agree with you right now in Jesus' name that that need is going to be supplied. Whatever you give attention to expands. Amen. This altar is open. Move down quickly in Jesus' name. Now, the other thing I want to say is I'd like everybody, if you would, everybody that will, step out of your seat. Let's just join around the front. And let's just tell God that, yes, we will. Oh, say yes. I will lift you high in the lowest valley. Yes, I will bless your name. Yes, I will sing for joy when my heart is heavy all my days. Yes, I will all my days, all my Brother Travis, give me some more keyboard and more drums. Yes, I will. Yes, I will. Sing the in the lowest valley. Bless your name. Come on, say yes, I will. Sing for joy when my heart is heavy. Give me a guitar too, please. All my days, yes, I will. Yes, I will. I will all my days, all my days. Yes, I will. I choose to praise. Yes, to glorify, glorify the name of all names. Nothing, nothing can stand again. I choose to praise, to glorify. To glorify, glorify the name of all names and nothing, and nothing can stand against. Yes, I will. Yes, oh, it's valley. Yes, Brother Willie, bless your name, Brother Travis. Whoa.
Nothing can stand again. 